The title of this video is Speech Anatomy. It means the parts of the body which have to do with speech. In the speech production mechanism video, like basically I describe where air starts, which is the lungs, and then it goes through the trachea to the vocal folds, that whole process. But we didn't focus on specific articulators. I thought it would make sense and it would be actually very useful if we describe every articulator. Although in the speech production mechanism video, I provided an overall description of the vocal tract. Basically, vocal is the adjective for voc, which is voice or sound. In this particular case, you could say it's speech sounds. So vocal tract is the tract in the human body where speech is produced. And that consists of three parts, the pharynx, the oral, the oral cavity, and the nasal cavity. They're also called the resonance chambers. Why resonance? Because when sound resonates, it actually is reinforced. So if it's just air coming from the lungs, like if you breathe out, you don't hear any sound, right? Unless you put it to use, you don't hear any sound. Unless you decide cognitively that you want to use that sound and your sound energy and turn it into speech. In that case, once you make that decision in your mind, which can be in a fraction of a second and very rapid, you decide to turn your exhalation into speech you also have the option of not doing that. But once you decide to do that, you turn on a lot of switches in your body. You activate certain parts of your body, starting from the vocal folds, which you have to decide, am I going to vibrate them or not vibrate them? If you look at this picture, the entirety of the vocal tract is depicted, is shown. It is very important to develop your pictorial memory and to memorize this like a picture instead of descriptions. How do we understand this picture? Obviously this is like a mid-sagittal section of the human head and neck. There are certain parts along the vocal tract you could say that are involved in the production of speech. So once you get introduced into the vocal tract, into the speech anatomy, you understand that the parts along the vocal tract that are involved in the production of speech, they're called articulators because they're involved in articulation of speech, production of speech. And the part of phonetics that actually studies this part of speech, which is production of speech, is called articulatory phonetics. This part of phonetics is so important that it actually is a sub-branch of phonetics and you could only specialize in this part. We also have auditory phonetics, which also involves human anatomy. But for this video and the next, let's just focus on articulatory phonetics. The articulators are places or points along this, the vocal tract that are involved in the production of speech, and they are divided into two parts. Any guess what those two parts are? Active and passive articulators. Okay, so first we have the vocal tract. Along the vocal tract, we have art the articulators. Active articulators are those articulators that move. Passive articulators are the articulators that do not move. You might think to yourself, oh, past active articulators are more important because they move. But if you look at the consonant chart, you would see that most of the words that are used to refer to different sounds are actually passive articulators. For example, when talking about the sound t as in tip or d as in dip, which are called alveolar sounds, they're alveolar plosives, the difference being that ta is voiceless and da is voiced. It involves the alveolar ridge, which is a passive articulator because it does not move. But then you would wonder what is the active articulator in this? So the active articulator in this would be 
the tongue, yes. The same applies to dental as well as palatal, velar, uvular. It's as important to know about the passive articulars as it's important to know about the active articulars.